Howdy, it's Kyle talking about tornadoes. They're planet Earth's most powerful storms and can be a truly devastating natural phenomenon. They can emerge from large thunderstorms depending on the situation with atmospheric instability and the positioning of the jet stream, but they are not distributed evenly globally. In fact, where you have by far the largest numbers of tornadoes, including the vast majority of major ones, are right here in the U.S. So here I want to discuss the geography of tornadoes and just why we get so many of them here in the U.S. than the rest of the world. Okay, I want to make quick mention of this map right here. It was sent to me by a company named Mirror Way, and these are the best physical geography maps you're going to find. This one is Raised Relief. They also have Shader Relief, all the states, a bunch of other ones. And I promise you, I wouldn't endorse something if they weren't really, really good. So from now on, you'll start seeing maps of theirs in my studio set. And there'll also be a link in the description of the videos to where if you want to make a purchase, you can use that link and save 12%. But yeah, Mirror Way Maps, check them out. In order to understand the geography of tornadoes, we have to first go over a little bit of the meteorology of them. Essentially, they form along cold fronts or sometimes a squall line in front of the cold front, but what is occurring is you have one air mass interacting with another. So you've probably been in the situation where it was relatively warm and it got really windy. And after that, it was much colder and drier. And that was when a cold front moved through. The two different ways that air masses can be different that affects their interaction are through temperature and humidity. So if you have a cold air mass interacting with a warm one or a dry air mass interacting with a humid one, you can have much different types of instability. But if you have a very cold, dry air mass interacting with a very warm, humid air mass is when you can get the greatest instability because you have huge differences in both temperature and humidity. So you look at a map like this showing tornadoes in the U.S., and I can never get enough of this beautiful John Nelson map, but this shows tornado tracks within the contiguous U.S. And right in the middle of the country is where you have a large number of interactions between those cold, dry air masses from Canada and the warm, humid air masses from the Gulf of Mexico. But you look into the western U.S. and you see significantly fewer tornadoes. You don't really have much atmospheric interaction between those cold, dry air masses in Canada with the warm, humid ones because the Gulf of Mexico is pretty far away at this point. And if you're familiar with the west coast, you know the offshore air masses aren't exactly warm. These are also fairly cold themselves, so there isn't a huge difference in temperature interaction between the air masses in the western U.S. But you'll also notice that big black hole in the central Appalachians centered on West Virginia and areas just south. Here you have mountains that do create a little bit of separation between these two air masses, but what also happens in the mountains is, say, a cold air mass approaches it, and as it gets to the mountainous area, it will rise because of topography. So it doesn't need the interaction between two different air masses to rise and have the air cool and condense and precipitate. So if these air masses are able to lose their moisture through topography and not relying on atmospheric interaction, you're less likely to have tornadoes, as is pretty evident with this map. Tornadoes are the most powerful storms on Earth in terms of wind speed. The most powerful ones are known to reach speeds of over 200 miles per hour. And for it to even be considered an EF0, the baseline of a tornado, it has to be about 65 miles an hour or more. You have the intensity scale that goes from EF0 to EF5. Around EF3 is where you start getting huge amounts of damage. You have 165 mile an hour winds at that point. And to put that in perspective, a Category 5 hurricane, the most powerful hurricanes, are having speeds about 160 miles per hour. So there are multiple levels on the tornado intensity scale that are higher than the highest level on a hurricane scale. And if you've ever been in a storm that has had tornadoes forming from it nearby, it can be really scary. I mean, the most frightening things I've been through weather-wise have been big tornado outbreak thunderstorm areas. So these collisions of air masses explain why we have so many tornadoes in the U.S., but... Why do we get so many more here than everywhere else on Earth? When you look at a world physical map, you can see many areas where you might expect to find tornadoes being formed based on some of the things I was saying. So it's not just up here where we have cold air mixing with warm air here. You have cold air down here in South America, obviously pretty warm here. Lots of cold air here, huge cold air masses, a lot of warm humid air masses here. So why don't we get so many tornadoes in other parts of the world. So let's take a look at some of these individual continents to see why that is. So based on some of the things that I've been saying, you might expect to find a lot of tornadoes in Asia, especially. Look at these huge areas where it's cold, dry air masses up in Siberia, very warm, humid air masses down here. But you look at what the big difference is with Asia. 
east-west oriented mountain ranges. So what you have here are the Himalayas, the Pamirs, the tallest mountains in the world. Well, these are blocking some of these colder air masses here from meeting with these warmer air masses here. So what happens is it just stays really cold and dry here, very cold, brutal winters up there. Down here, this warm air often goes up, meets up against the really high Himalayas and dumps a ton of water. So you have torrential rains there, very powerful monsoons. So these areas have extreme weather, but it's not because these two areas of air masses interacting. You have these, again, east-west oriented mountains keeping these two air masses from colliding far too often. And then you go over to Europe and it's the same thing. You have these cold, dry air masses here up in Russia and Scandinavia, much warmer air down here in the Mediterranean, but the major mountain ranges in Europe are east-west oriented. The Alps over here, the Caucasus over here. So again, you have some of this cold air not able to as freely mix with some of this warm air. So, and you do get some tornadoes in this part of the world because this is where, again, you do have some of that mixing of these air masses, but most of the time, the Alps mountains here are just keeping those two major air masses separated. The Black Sea also uh, doesn't allow for some of these, uh, you know, majorly different air masses to collide right here. So again, significantly fewer tornadoes in Europe. But what about South America? Those are some pretty strong north-south oriented mountain ranges. So South America, huge areas with warm, humid air masses. And you have Patagonia down here, cold and dry. But the major difference here is that this isn't a huge area. So you think about how large Canada is, just a large area where you have huge air masses. You don't have the same size, the same scope of air masses here in Patagonia, although they are cold and dry, warm and humid. And you do get a decent number of tornadoes here. This is one of the other major areas in the world outside of the central US, but you just don't have as much because these air masses here aren't quite as strong as the ones you get in Canada. Okay, so what about Africa? You have a large north-south oriented mountain range here. Obviously very large, warm, dry air masses here, but the major difference in Africa is that nothing is really that cold. The southernmost point of Africa is just over 30 degrees latitude, so it's basically entirely subtropical or tropical, so you don't have any mixing of really cold air masses because this isn't really that cold down here, but you can get some tornadic activity in this part of the continent just because you do have some mixing, but it won't be as often, it won't be anywhere near as violent as you get in the central U.S. And it's a similar story here where you do have warm, humid air masses here, relatively cold here, but they aren't that cold. So you do have some tornadic activity, some severe thunderstorms here and throughout Australia, but nowhere near as what you're going to get in the central U.S. with those much larger discrepancies in the temperature and the humidity of the air masses. And that brings us back to North America, where we have all three major components required to have a huge region for tornado formation. There are large areas of continental cold, dry air masses here, large areas of warm, humid air masses here, and no physical barrier between the two to keep them from mixing. So when you have all three of those, you can have a major area for tornado formation. And that's why the central U.S. is the part on Earth where you have the most tornadoes being formed. So that's my look at tornadoes in the U.S. and why we get so many of them here than anywhere else. And if you live in the Midwest or the Southeast in the U.S., you should definitely have one of these. It's a weather radio. It could literally save your life. A lot of folks turn their phones off at night, or maybe turn off emergency alerts, don't want one in the middle of the night. But that's when many of the tornadoes hit. So get one of these. It could literally save your life. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a nerd. And check out Mirror Way Maps. Again, link in the description. You can get 12% off the best physical geography maps you're going to find. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. As always, thank you very much.